Well, hey there, beautiful buttholes. I, I gotta... <coughs> <coughs> Drives me crazy. Uh, been a while since the update. Um, actually, since you've seen me last, uh, I took a little weekend trip to, uh, long weekend, to the state of Maine. Uh, to be quite sober about it, I uh, just went up to say my goodbyes to uh, uh, my chief and my old Sarge and and um, a couple incredibly close friends, uh, my second dad, and um, we got all that taken care of. Uh, hopefully, I see him again. That's that's the ambition. Um, I have been off of chemo for I don't even know how long at this point like, like about three weeks I guess it is uh, I had a doctor's appointment the other day of course uh, my doctor wants me to go back on chemo and and uh, take all these um, trial drugs uh, experiment or experimental drugs uh, go to a high state because they got something and I just I don't want to take some pill and end up with boils all over me or my skin falling off and, and just actually make things even more unpleasant than what they are. Um, things aren't horribly unpleasant. Um, I can tell that things are progressing. Uh, the big thing right now is at least I'm not sick. I got this stupid cough, a little bit of shortness. Well, I have no stamina, so that gives me the shortness of breath. Um, I feel like my lungs are this big. Um, also, uh, pain. Um, I think it's the uh, bone lesions and, and so forth. Uh, they're finding new places to nest. And um, so I know one day I just felt like my neck. Actually, I, I mowed the yard. And I think from, you know, being on the steering wheel, and of course you got to, jump around on the mower like one of the flying Valinda brothers on my property because of all the hills and everything um across my shoulders uh, hurt really bad and my neck just felt like it swelled up like a buck in rut um I have a, a couple new pains one is just right in the middle of my left thigh muscle uh don't know what's up with that it's more like a cramp type of a thing and then um my hip like my hip socket starting to act up again and uh it's pretty painful and then i don't know if i've told you guys or not but uh where my scapula comes into my spine on my left side um it, it, I, I know it's there um sounds like julie's taking a shower um so uh I think it catches everything up. I had my first appointment with the cardiac doctor. Um, she's a cutie and she's pretty cool, actually, nurse practitioner. Um, she's uh, taking me off a couple pills to put me on some other one that she likes a little bit better. She knows more than I do. Um, I got, oh, awesome. I'm like, Iron Man. I, I so want to just walk into a bar, rip my shirt off, and just, Rawr! and see how many people run out because. Brace your eyes. Check this thing out. I could not get the one that glows red. Uh, I asked. They don't have it. But uh, this is a monitor. You guys are probably more familiar with it than I am. Uh, I'm going to be wearing it for a couple weeks. Uh, if I have a if I have a moment, I need to hit the button so that it, I guess it records all the time. But if I hit that the magic button there, and uh, at that point, um, it records more. I don't know. But I wear it for two weeks, and then I bring it back, mail it back, whatever. Um, we're still trying to plan a trip to see Trey out in uh, um, California, San Diego. And uh, Ju Julie's dealing with the U.S. government on trying to find housing. Bless her heart. She's a saint. And, uh, yeah, because... Uh, we wouldn't be going with it with uh, without her, and that's just all there is to it. Because uh, she is, uh, she's working with some waterheads out there. Let me tell you. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> the main reason for this video, because that catches everybody up on everything. I'm still, I still got cancer. Um, but I've said several times uh, to several people, and I think I think I've said it on here is that. Um, 
and, and my trip to Maine is a perfect example, that I have always been a firm believer that God puts certain people in your life for who knows what reason. And, and, and some, some arbitrary people. And uh, just like, you know, I lived in, well, not me, me, me and Julie, this is going to be a long video, so I hope you got your Wi-Fi on. Uh, Julie and I lived in Maine for six full years starting, and I was creeping into my seventh year up there. And um, the people that I visited, uh, with the exception of Jim Cottrell, who uh, I dated his daughter in high school, and um, he, he's always been like a second dad to me, him, him and Carol. And uh, she wasn't so much a dad, but, you know, you get it. Um, you know, with, with, with uh, I'm going to try to hold it together on this video. But with people, you know, my chief, we're, we're brothers from another mother, uh, Darren Tripp. You'll see him make some uh, uh, comments that most people probably don't understand on my Facebook uh, posts. Uh, uh, me and him were just, uh, uh, me and Jeff, me and Rusty, um, uh, you know, uh, Rod, Rod, Rodney Farah, he, he, uh, I used to shoot precision, uh, bullseye pistol with him. And, uh, he was actually, when I went up there, I wasn't working. I was trying to straighten out the house and Julie was working. And, uh, when we first moved up there, I was kind of like the, uh, what do you call it? Mr. Mr. Dad, Miss, whatever you call it, Mr. Mom, Mr. Mom, and uh, taking care of the kids, and and uh, Rodney worked with my wife, and and by quizzing her, found out that I was a gun guy and a shooter, and, and and things like that, and they used to shoot bullseye pistol at the sportsman's club, and and he kept asking, you know, you know, when can Heath come out and play? When can Heath come out and play? And so finally, she let me come out and play, and I have to tell you that my first night shooting bullseye pistol with my government model. Uh, I came home and had to admit to my wife that I had finally found something that I could not do with a firearm because that's tough and you learn a lot and uh, kind of like indoor archery and uh, but all these guys Scott my closet gunsmith up there the dude he astounds me the craftsmanship the talent this man has is oh my gosh I gotta share this real quick for all my gun people out there, who would not like to have a 4570 double rifle? Because America, right? So Scott's no different. And um, God, I wish I could do that horrible main accent he has. But uh, excuse me, that was nasty. He goes to a gun show and finds this tattered up, just completely clapped out, side by side, no name, 12 gauge shotgun for, I don't know, like 50 bucks hundred bucks, whatever it was. Stock broke, like clear off this thing. Parts missing. It's just a big turd. So then he goes on somewhere and he finds two barrels for 1895 Marlin, which is 4570. <coughs> Lever action. I got one right here somewhere. And um, so he buys these two barrels. Well then, apparently he, he, he turns the barrels so that uh, I would say, I'm, I'm guessing here, but possibly I think he backboard into the, sh the 12 gauge side by side barrels, opened them up a little bit, left a little bit of stock in the end. So almost like sleeving an engine block so the sleeves don't fall, you know, so the barrels don't fall right through. I'm guessing, I don't know. Uh, anyway, he takes these 1895 barrels and turns them down on his lathe so that they slide right inside of these 12 gauge barrels. Puts them in there, drills up through the bottom of the 12 gauge barrels back at the breech, and puts a little set screw in there to hold them. Takes the gun out, pew, pew, bullets go. Pew. So he loosens up the set screws and rotates the barrels inside the 12 gauge barrels until finally he has both barrels out of this 45 set. Pew, pew, I like that noise. Did you like that? So he's got both at like, I don't know, 35, 50 yards where it was. Um, he's got both bear, both bullets basically impacting in the same spot at a given yardage that he, that he liked. And then he locks the barrels down. And I'm not sure if he silver soldered them or what. I'm sure he did. I'm, I'm sure these things will not move because 
he's a craftsman. And um, so then he goes through, he fixes this stock, and this stock was, I guess, just smashed, trashed, and crashed. And, and of course, he's, he's like, yeah, if you look right here, you can see a little line where I repaired it. Give me a break. This thing, it looks brand, uh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And then uh, I think it might have been either the forearm was just completely trash, because I, I think it made a whole new forearm for the thing. And so he's got a 4570 double rifle, because who wouldn't want a 4570 double rifle? The guy is just, he, he, he's just, he's a great friend. He's an amazing talent. I mean, this guy, the stuff that he can do with his hands is just, it, it kind of makes you not like him all the time. But, oh my gosh, this, this dump, he, he, he built a, uh, he took a 94 Winchester, you know, 30-30 lever action. Boring. Boring. I've always wanted a cartridge named after me. So I think I'm going to make the 416 Gunther. His name's spelled Gunther, but it's pronounced Gunther because he's from Maine. And so he makes the 416 Gunther. From like, I, I, I could be completely wrong, but I think he took 303 British brass, turned the rim to match the 3030 bolt. Um, it, it's, it's 41 caliber, but not like pistol bullet 41 caliber. I mean, he's shooting some heavy bullets, like 416 Remington type bullets. And I, I don't know if this thing is straight wall. I don't remember. I just know that he's got the only model 94 Winchester 416 Gunther in the world. And I, I just have all respect in the world for it. I mean, the guy just... No, it blows me away. So anyway, like I said, man, people get put in your in your life for a certain reason. And there's not one of those guys that I wouldn't go through a door for, go through a door with, uh, travel a thousand miles to do whatever need to be do, done. Um, the people... I know they shake their heads with our relationship with the Wobbly Arrow guys. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. But uh, once again, these are just... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for being nasty. Uh, going down the road, listen to the Wobbly Arrow podcast. If you've never listened to the Wobbly Arrow podcast, prepare yourself. Dick jokes, very uncomforting homosexual innuendos and jokes and very juvenile uh but these guys once again not a door i wouldn't go through for these guys and um all it was is me and my wife were, were going down the road i'm like you gotta listen to these idiots and we're listening to this podcast and i'm laughing my butt off and she's not because different humor and uh they're needing some place to to broadcast their podcast uh from the ata show the archer trade association show I'm like, man, we could host them. You know, they got X number of, of viewers, which is more than client, more than we have clients. I was like, yeah, get our name out there a little bit as far as the Young Guns Archery, Young Guns University. Let people know what we do. It gives us a platform, and it gives them, you know, a place to, to do their thing. And um, it could have been a one-and-done thing. Uh, it's not. And uh, these guys, they're just... We are so different that it's a little bit mind. It's a little bit of a mind screw, to be honest. I mean, it's a little mind numbing because uh, we are really nothing alike for the most part. But we just something put us together. We feed off of each other. We make each other better, and there's nothing I wouldn't do for them. It is what it is. And um, okay, so God, this is taking forever. Um, like I said, God puts people in, in, in your life for a reason. And today I got, um, uh, God just flat kicked me right in the sack. Uh, and I'll tell you what, after today, how can you not believe in God? Uh, how can you not believe he's watching, that he's involved, uh, I got blown away today. Uh, I had to leave this. I left this fellow's house in tears today. And uh, actually, hold on a second. 
All right, I'm back. I had to blow my nose. I was getting disgusting. That's one bad. I don't know what the deal is, but I used to have like a permanent head cold forever. And uh, so anyway, Julie's been. Um, we've been trying to find some sort of a natural thing for this cancer. Uh, I'm not pie in the sky thinking that I can, you know, eat dandelion roots and cure this thing. But if I can hold it off, if I can, if I can do anything, it's like I said, j just because I've given up and I've fallen out of the trust tree with the doctors, that doesn't mean I'm quitting. And uh, so we're working on things. Julie got in, the, she, she, somehow she found out about this thing with uh, food grade hydrogen peroxide. I think it's 3% hydrogen peroxide. I've read about it a little bit. She's read about it a lot. Um, if your opinion does not align with mine, save your breath because I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and I am 1,000% confident in what I'm going to do. Um, but anyway, this hydrogen peroxide, they talk about, uh, you know, you use a few drops of this stuff in distilled water. You can ingest it. You can also use it through a, a ne is it a nebulizer where you like, breathe it in, which is what she's actually wanting to do because I have so much trash in my lungs right now. And, um, but I mean, there's risk. God, you wouldn't believe the risk I have just going across the road to check my mail. These bastards will run your ass over. So I'm not really worried about the risk. But anyway, me and Julie, we've been reading on this, and we've talked to certain people, and we haven't got any uh, really solid positive feedback from our, our nurse friends. Most of us just like, eh, I don't really know anything about it. But, you know, but I, I know that hydrogen peroxide, I mean, it's an oxidizer. It's it, it's nothing to toy with. It's, you know, you gotta be careful. Uh, it can be some bad juju. And, um, but we've been reading about this stuff and, and Julie, she's been a little bit, uh, has some reservations, just like this book she's reading is from 2008. And, you know, uh, we, we have concerns. I mean, because we're not just jumping into things with both feet without any, you know, without checking this stuff out first. And um, so anyway, we've told nobody about this until now, and uh, other than our nurse friends. We're getting rid of a couch, and we're looking to buy a couch, and of course, we can't do, we never have been able to do the whole furniture store thing. So we found a guy that he's, uh, they're moving, they got to get rid of this stuff, he doesn't want to put it in storage, and so he's got this couch, and we go look at it today and walk in the house and there's this guy he's uh 76 years old and bib overhaul salt of the earth kind of a guy here's the couch and we had told him julie had told him that you know we may need we would need help as far as loading things like that because i have cancer and i've lost all of my musculature i i just can't bad heart I just, I'm not much help. He's like, oh, absolutely no problem. No problem at all. So we can take care of that. I'll help you out. And then he's like, uh, well, we're up here today and, and I got to stay on course here. We're up here today and he was asking me about the cancer. He's like, you mind if I ask you what kind of cancer you have? And, and so I told him and, and we were talking a little bit and, and um, we had conversed enough that I think he uh, was pretty confident in knowing my position on modern medicine and doctors. And I think that made him feel a little bit more comfortable uh, in, in talking to me. And so he just, out of the blue, out of the blue, you ever tried uh, food grade hydrogen peroxide? It's like, um, no, but we've been reading books on this stuff. We've been looking at this stuff. We're just kind of you know, a little bit hesitant on pulling the trigger. He's like, yeah, he said, I've been taking it since 1988. So I'm 76 years old. Uh, he said, I take, you know, about 10 or 12 drops a day. And, uh, you know, and he does the distilled water and all that. And um, he's like, yeah, he said, actually, he said, uh, I ran across it back in the 80s. And he said, uh, so I'm originally from Oklahoma and said we were living on Indian Reservation. And uh, somebody on the Indian Reservation got stomach cancer. And of course, healthcare is not incredible on the on the res, and um, so he'd come across this stuff, and he's like, 
he started doing it. He said, you know, I told him about it. He started doing it. And um, he's still alive today. That's all I can tell you. And he said, when I, he goes, when I saw that, he said, what I started doing is I started taking it just as preventive medicine. He said, you know, said that it's got the, uh, it kills germs, it oxygenates your body, your body lives off the oxygen. He said, it made sense to me. He said, I'm no doctor. He said, I've been taking it for, you know, 40 years. He said, it hasn't done anything bad to me. And, and I'll tell you what, for 76, this dude looked like he was maybe 62. And of course, he's getting ready to load up a, freaking couch and everything else for me and um so he's pretty sp still pretty spry a hell lot better doing a lot, hell lot better than i am and um but it just how random this uh, this guy just like, hey you ever tried to you know food grade hydrogen peroxide and it's like you know and we've been and this is something we've been waiting to pull the trigger on but we we just didn't have anything to push us over the edge and uh over the edge uh, over the hump let's just do the hump not the edge and um but it's like it's it's so random and i gotta tell i mean i'm sorry god 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 i don't know what that fellow's name is but god and i believe that to my bones and I had to leave. I was like, you know, we got to get out of here. These people got work to do, you know, because they're moving. I was like, because I was getting ready to just freaking explode with emotion. And um, then I did a little bit on the ride home because, and like I told my wife, I told Julie, I said, you know, I said, when something like that happens, how can you not believe in God and just, and, and think that, or think, know that he's there. And he's, he's, you know, for some reason, he's, he, I, I'm a firm believer that he's got an eye on me and I'm doing the hydrogen peroxide thing if you haven't figured it out yet. And like I said, you know, I don't really care whose opinion is what of it. It's just, I've made my decision and, uh, that's, that's it. It's like, that's it. I, I got enough, uh, telling me that, uh. And, and hitting me in the feels that this is the thing to do. And um, I guess that's it. But um, I just, man, how can you not believe in God? How can you go out in the woods and climb in that tree, sit on that hillside, you know, waiting to kill some of God's prettiest little animals um, and and see all of the creation around you and not believe in God and that's where I've been for years and uh, I'm sorry I'm just like ugh. but um, you know I, I've, I've like I said I've always believed in God um, never been very vocal about it haven't felt very comfortable about speaking about it and but uh, I've only been at this one level and, and I've always uh, uh, I've always admired people that can just you know Jesus take the wheel you know have that level of belief and um, just let the chips fall and I just I, and I'm still not there but good lord am I really close and um but that that's uh that's what happened to heath today and um also man i don't have hold on Boop. all right i'm back um i mentioned a book the other day uh it's a book that i started reading and then uh to be completely honest i found it on audio books uh Man, I can't uh, I can't remember the name of the, the app that I use. Anyway, uh, so I finished out on the audio book because I ain't got time to. Well, I listen better than I read. But anyway, this is the book, and I'm pretty sure that I'm I'm late on the wagon on this thing. But um, if uh, 
if you have a personality that's much more fact driven um, and you are at all interested in pursuing your faith uh, I'm not really honest like improving your faith um, this is a book for you this is a book for me uh, fantastic book uh, basically what it is is this guy was uh, uh, he, did, he didn't believe in, in God at all uh, his wife did start going to church <coughs> he was a pretty top shelf uh, investigative reporter and he decided that he was going to prove his he was going to prove to his wife that she was full baloney that God didn't exist and uh, he was a self recognized atheist and um, became Christian through his findings and um, they're not his I mean he, did, it's, he interviews all these different people and it's very matter of fact. It's very, um, I'll tell you what, if you're a guy, guy that's ever had to, uh, especially if you're a police officer, we've had to interview several people and take this guy's story, that guy's story, this guy's story, that guy's story, and then put it together into the truth and lock somebody up. It's the book for you. It's, it, it's uh, can't say enough about it. But it's uh, The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel um, and uh, God, I'm trying to remember the app that I have odd odd some sort of audio thing I don't know it doesn't matter but uh, actually check that book out um, I, I, I recommend it but like I said I've found uh, by talking to people that I'm kind of late to the party on, on the book but uh, there's people out there that need to read it I'm, I'm sure and um, I think that we have covered everything that we can possibly cover in 27 minutes about my day and, uh, and, and where I'm at. So uh, I got nothing real big coming up. Uh, working on our Jeep, cleaning out garages. Uh, I think there's a, a community, uh, Germantown has like a community yard sale. I think that's happening in a couple weeks. Um, we will be partaking, I'm pretty sure. And uh, because that's an open weekend for us, and I will tell you right now, I will have muzzle loaders there. I will have a night TK2000 turkey shotgun with all the fixings if you're interested. Uh, I have uh, go out and try to find a, uh, a Thompson Center 56 caliber smooth bore. I got one, and it'll be there, and it'll be for sale once again with all the fixings if I can locate them around here. Um, I sell my, I cycle through all my hunting stuff. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of that for sale. Um, of course, Julia will have all her stuff. There'll be all kinds of household goods. Um, possibly some tools. I don't know. Sometimes I sell them. Sometimes I don't, but, uh, I know there's going to be a few Jeep parts. I got a brand new Jeep bumper. I mean, brand new, uh, TJ, YJ. I don't know if it'll do a CJ or not. It's just like the, the square, like C-channel factory bumper. Uh, also has a little Jeep plastic plate right there. It covers your frame rails, your horns. Um, yeah, there'll be some other stuff, I'm sure. But um, anyway, I will see you all later. I will talk to you all later. And thanks for your patience in watching this incredibly long video. I'm going up to watch Glenn Beck yeah on youtube uh he's got a show tonight uh covering the border and um just the way it was titled it seemed pretty interesting and um it's all about uh you know president plato i think and, and his uh mm, are you regretting your vote yet yeah wow anyway pray for me pray for this country pray for my wife pray for my kids Pray for yourselves. Get, get with God, whatever that means to you. Um, I'll tell you what, man. Things are happening in the McDonald household, and uh, it's uh, it's nothing short of mind-blowing, I got to tell you. So, 
Hopefully things are headed down a really good path. I gotta go. Stay grumpy. See you on the range.